Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to go through some basic room setup procedures. I see a lot of cart before the horse, as we call it. I see a lot of uh, listening positions uh, incorrect. I see a lot of speakers too close to the walls and stuff. But let's just focus on treatment today and try to match your treatment with your usage and what you're trying to do. The first thing that we must do with any room is we must match the size and the volume to the usage. I know you probably get tired of me saying this, but it's so important. Because if we're trying to do too much, especially in the low frequency side, in a too small of a room, we're never going to get ahead of ourselves. We're never going to get anything that resembles really good quality sound. And a lot of you send in rooms that are just simply too small for the usage that you're trying to accomplish. And I'll be very honest and tell you that. And that's where I came up with that chart and graph that we use. A lot of people don't like that. I understand that. A lot of people don't like to be told that the room in which they're in is too small. Well, it is because the laws of physics tell us that we need a certain amount of volume, that we need a certain size, in order for the energy from our speakers, produced by our amplifiers, run through our cables, to sound good. It's not personal opinion, it's just the physics. So we have to, we have to really be conscious about what we're doing. We're not going to put a six foot tall speaker in a clothes closet. I mean, that's what a lot of us try to do. So we have to be really careful and match room size volume to usage. Low frequency management. This baffles a lot of people because they can't see it. They can feel it, but they can't see it. So if they can't see it, they don't know how to treat it. So low frequency management is really, really important. I started this company with our carbon technology because I was so unhappy with the current technology in the marketplace back in the 90s. And I bought all this stuff and I tested it all. And none of it worked as advertised, really. Maybe. 5%, 10%, but you needed so many units to have a 30% impact, a 40% impact, that you'd end up spending more money on treatment than you did your equipment, which in some cases may be advisable depending on room size and volume. So the bottom line here is we must match the low frequency management tools that we're using. There's a certain type, there's a certain amount, and there's a certain position. We build our low frequency technology into the four walls and even the ceiling on our new builds because that way you don't have a lot of freestanding boxes sitting around in the room taking up space. So if you're fortunate enough to be able to build a new room, we build the technology right into the wall itself. So it's a great way to uh, minimize the space, the amount of space requirements that you have, build it into the wall and not have a bunch of boxes standing around. Here's another thing people don't really understand. The number and size of the low frequency drivers in your room are really critical. The difference between a 10 inch and a 2 inch, a 12 inch, sorry, driver, just that 2 inches is another 2 dB in energy. That's a lot of energy. So another 2 dB to exasperate and excite existing problems is not wanted. So we have to match the size of the driver to the room size and volume and then positioning those low frequency sources in the room. The room size and volume will tell you where the low energy producing devices need to be. It's not the same for every room. And please don't put them in the corners. If you put them in the corners, you excite the modes that are in the corners, you exaggerate room response by 3 dB. And if you put a large subwoofer in the corner, you add another 2 dB of energy there. So you're just causing more problems for yourself. So the position of all low frequency drivers in the room is critical. So what do we do for our absorption, for our middle and highs? We know how to treat the lows. A lot of us like to use this building insulation material, Roxol, DuPont 703, DuPont 706, all of these building insulations. Well, they were designed for BTU retention, heat and cold, not designed for sound, music. You have to look at the rates and levels of absorption. I can walk into a room that's treated with Roxel. I can hear it in, in a second. I hear it in this room that we're in right now. And that's the old way of doing things because it's cheap. 
but it's not designed for music and voice. Just remember that. So make sure you match the rates and levels of anything you're using to the music and the voice. That's what we're all about here. We're trying to get the music to sound like it's not being played in a room. The best sound you'll ever get is take your hi-fi outside, set it up in the country. No walls, no ceiling, just the earth below it. You'll, you'll hear music like you've never heard before with no room sound. And that's really the, the best kind of sound. So our goal in acoustics is to make the room go away. We make that go away with absorption and diffusion technologies. Some of us do a little bit better at it than others. With diffusion, it's all about selecting the position, the distance, the frequency response. It's not an easy thing. You have to do some calculations and we can help you with that. And always remember that you gotta treat all six surfaces of your room. You can't just do a few. You gotta do them all because they all work together. So room setup procedure, make sure you got the right size and volume. Always go after the low frequency energy first. Use absorption and diffusion, but make sure you're using the right technologies for the right applications and in the right position in the room. Thank you. Hi everyone, thank you for watching our videos. We really appreciate your support. And if you could give us a thumbs up for our Facebook page, that would really be helpful to us. Our room form uh, gives us all the information about your room, length, width, height, usage, and we need you to fill that out before you send it in. Those of you that just found us on the internet and are under a time crunch, you can go to the contact section of our website and there's a book now button so you can book an appointment with us, but make sure I have your uh, room form to go on with it because I need all that information when we talk. But I'll be happy to accommodate you. The ebook series that we have is free. Please subscribe to that. There's exclusive videos in there so you can get a, an idea of uh, you, your particular situation possibly with the videos. And then our forum, we have a forum on our website. There's a lot of forums out there on the internet. Our forum will, will all actually answer your questions and, and comments, so you'll be dealing directly with me through our forum. So once again, thank you for your support.